Hello and uh, welcome to another video from uh, trainingright.com. Uh, in this uh, video, I will be introducing you to uh, water. What is uh, water, uh, which is spelled as W A T I R, um, and uh, why is it used and how it is used um, to do our software automation testing? Well, to get started, um, water, which is spelled as uh, W A T I R, um, is pronounced as water. Um, I know. Um, now it's basically, uh, it stands for your web application testing in Ruby. So as it goes, uh, it kind of like works, uh, uh much better with uh, Ruby. And, uh, we just need to, um, download, um, uh, that on your machine. Make sure that, uh, uh, you set, uh, the environment. And once you set up the environment, then we can go ahead and then do, um, some automation testing using uh, Waters web driver. Okay, to get started, uh, we um, have to um, go into our command line and uh, do a gem install for Water web driver. So let me do that. Um, first of all, let me uh, see what kind of uh, Ruby I'm running right now in terms of Ruby version. So Ruby hyphen version should give me um, <clears throat> the version of Ruby which I'm running right now. And uh, um, on my machine, if I need to run uh, the water automation um, uh, testing uh, framework, then I need to basically download it. And that is done using the gem uh, install command. So we will do gem install um, water um web driver so with that um it is going to uh prepare my machine so that it could do um my um automation testing using water okay so um as you can see it is uh waiting for uh it to download and as soon as it gets downloaded uh actually on my machine i had downloaded it um earlier um so you don't see the complete stuff but uh once it gets downloaded, um, let us uh, go ahead and then write a script uh, that would um, show us um, as how to do the automation testing. So I will, first of all, I'm going to go and um, walk you through the test case that I'm going to run. That test case um, is going to be for our uh, website, which is trainingright.net. And as you can see, if you scroll down um, here, uh, somewhere here in the middle of the page, uh, we have logging in to our website. So this is the test case with, that we will try to automate and uh, eventually um, after we finish this uh, uh, working with the script um, as how to automate I in my next video I'm going to be showing you as how to data drive it meaning that I would be having tons of data in my Excel and I will connect um, using Ruby code into Excel and bring the data and then pass it to our script so we will do uh, data driven automation um, by fetching the data from Excel. But first of all, let's write a simple script. And um, the manual test case is going to be something like this. So I'm going to be um, logging in with my phone number and the password. Um, <clears throat> the phone number is 732 That's our phone number for our company. And the password is the word password. When I click on submit, as you can see, it logs me in and uh, it gives me some details in here. It says that displaying information from automation testing resource management system for the following phone number. That's the phone number. And then it does recognize uh, that it, that phone number belongs to me. And then it, it, it gives me access to it. All right. So that's uh, the um, happy path scenario or the best case uh, uh, where we enter the right uh, phone number and the right password. So let's say if I go in and enter some uh, weird password and if I click on submit, then what I see here is <clears throat> it is still welcoming you to the training right uh, student portal. But it says, hey, we are sorry, no matching profile found for this particular username. All right. So that's going to be our test case that we are going to automate. And then uh, later on, I will be um, doing uh, data driven testing uh, in another video um, as how to do that. So for us to get started, I uh, must have um, some tool for me to write the Ruby code. Um, so you could basically go and then use uh, Notepad, which you all probably already have on your machine, or you could be using tools like uh, um notepad plus plus notepad plus plus or you could be using um 
some tool like uh, Ruby Mine. Um, you know, so in my case, I would be um, using my Notepad plus uh, plus. So if you go in here, that's the shortcut um, I have on my desktop. I open this, and I'm gonna write some code here. All right, so let's uh, uh, get started. Uh, the first thing is I need um, to uh, download the Ruby gems. So um, that uh, Ruby gems that we need to download uh, would be coming from. Um, hold on for a second, please. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I had to attend that phone call. All right, so we were talking about writing this uh, uh, script where basically we would go ahead and then do some automation testing using water. Um, now that we have prepared the environment, we have downloaded uh, uh, the uh, Ruby gem uh, for uh, the water web driver. Uh, we will um, go ahead and then write this script. Over here, what I'm trying to do here is uh, um, with this required statement, um, any file, any file that is that is uh, missing, um, you know, this file would go ahead. This this script would go ahead and then um, download that. So over here, I'm saying require Ruby gems, and then we also require uh, your um, web uh, water web driver um, for this script to work. Um, so. What else? The, these are almost like import statements, um, uh, you know. So if you are coming from a Java background, uh, um, and um, in this case, uh, right now, I think for what I am doing, these two would be more than enough. If I am doing um, some automation uh, where I'm driving the script from an external repository, like in um, Excel, then I need to uh, have. Uh, another uh, gem uh, but right now let me just save it quickly um, uh, let's see we are saving it in a C drive in a folder called Ruby code and I will call it uh, water uh, web testing dot rb as in Ruby file right um, the extension here is txt so that's why I enclosed that in the double code here all right okay so now that we have the required statements, um, let me just uh, go ahead and then instantiate um, uh, the browser object. So I'm going to say uh, o brow, right, uh, equals uh, um, water. Um, and uh, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to go ahead and instantiate an object uh, from this uh, water API. So from here, from this package, from this, from this class, uh, from this package, water package, I am instantiating the browser class and I'm calling the constructor of this browser class. And while I do that, while I do that, I instantiate that and I'm creating an object called obrow. Now to the constructor, to the constructor, um, I could also, uh, say that the type of the browser that I want is uh, let's say Firefox um, now uh, your uh, water would work for uh, it supports the web driver uh, supports uh, Firefox Chrome Internet uh, Explorer Safari all those uh, browsers are supported using this uh, um, web driver uh, API or water but uh, in this case I, I happen to choose Firefox so this line is going to basically create uh, that object for me all right now that uh, i have the browser object what do i do with the browser object so i would say that all right um browser object oh brow um i want to i want to go to uh where do you want to go i want to go to this site right um www.trainingright.net okay so that's the site where you where you want to go and then after going to that site, what do you want to do? According to our um, test case, I should be able to go and then enter a phone number. So if I uh, write a comment, um, that would be enter a phone number into the text box. All right. So that's basically I have to write the code for that. Now, in order for me to enter a phone number, and the phone number that I want to enter is, let's say, 732 998 
6650, right? So that's the phone number. So I want to enter that phone number into that text box. Now, I need to identify, I need to find out what that what that text box is, right? So um, now there are a couple of things um, that I could be doing. <clears throat> I could be using um, the um because this is an internet explorer uh browser so i could be using um uh, the um developer toolbar that would give me access to uh the properties of this element or i could i could even go with firefox and if you have done um any work in firefox uh like uh, um um let's say for instance if you have worked in selenium or uh, things like that, then you know that um, you can identify the attributes of any element on a page using a tool called um, <clears throat> using a tool called uh, Firebug. <clears throat> so I could be using a tool called Firebug and then identifying uh, the things in there. If I need to find out like uh, which particular object I need to know, I could do that. So this I could do, or I could also uh, in here hit F12 and um, try and find out, uh, you know, any particular element. So if I need to find out this particular element, so I would say um, I would go and then click on this element and then it tells me things about that element. So if you scroll down here, it tells me that the attributes of that element, which is a text box, is a TXT phone and uh, the ID is TXT phone. So how can I programmatically uh, enter something into this text box whose ID is txt phone or his whose name is txt phone. So the name and ID are the attributes of this of this text box. So in order to do that, I will I will say um, okay uh, browser. So o brow um, dot um, the field here is text field. So I would say text underscore uh, field and the way I'm going to identify that particular element in here the way I'm going to identify this element is using its attribute called ID right so it is ID equals txt phone right okay so the way I write the code is I would do a colon ID colon ID and I will do this and I would say that the ID of that is in single quotes I would say txt phone right so that was that was that's how basically i need to identify um this object the object is a text box and i'm identifying that and once i identify i'll use what is called a set method to enter a text and what i need to enter in here is this phone number so that is entered using a single code so that's that that's that all right okay so if i do a control s i would have saved it now so far, I have done this. I said that, okay, I need to use a, a Firefox browser. And using that browser, I need to navigate to this website, take me to that website. And once I go to the website, I want to identify one of the text fields uh, with its uh, ID being text phone and set this. And once you do that, <clears throat> the next thing is we need to set something in here. So let us identify this element. The way I'm going to identify this element is just go here. Um, click on that and look into the attributes of that. The attributes of that again is name is txt password, ID is txt password. So what do I do now? So basically it is the the um, idea here is I need to I need to enter the password. I need to enter the password and the password that I have is the following. So that's the password into the password text box password text box this is the uh, phone uh, text box okay so this is a comment in co uh, comments in Ruby are uh, mentioned with uh, with the hash sign or with the pound sign and the code for that would be obrow which is the browser dot uh, it's also a text field so text uh, field and oh, I said text file text field and this again can be identified um, by um, it was if I'm not mistaken I think it was txt txt password I'm gonna come back here and type txt password and uh, what do I want to set on that 
I want to set that uh, password uh, with uh, my password, which happens to be this. All right. Okay. So I did that. Next thing is I need to go and do what? I need to go and then click on this submit box. I need to go and then click on the submit box button rather um, so in order to find out uh, what are the attributes of the submit button again I just come in here click on the submit button and let's take a look as uh, what are the uh, attributes of the submit button as you can see the name of that is BTN submit and uh, we have some other attributes like uh, class and ID language on click type and value is submit right okay so I'm gonna do it slightly differently this time I will identify this this object or this element uh, with one of the attributes which is the value so let us see how we write that code so over here uh, click on the submit button that's what I am supposed to do and this would be the code of that so I would say oh brow browser um, do what browser you go and then find a button and that button the attribute the way you're going to find that button is whose value whose value uh, value is what whose value is um what was the value attribute of that if you see here the value attribute of that was uh, uh right here Oops. this submit right submit so i'm just going to come in here whose value is uh submit submit okay what do i do with it right browser will identify that button whose value is submit i need to go and then click on that beautiful we have done that right okay so if i had manually done this right so i enter 732-998-66550 and i enter a password and i click on it so what what does it happen if you see here it is going to it is going to if Two scenarios could happen. Either I could log in successfully, or um, it won't. If the password or username is wrong, then it, it won't log me successfully. So let us uh, write some code to check if we are we are logged in successfully or not. So how are we going to do that? What I'm going to uh, look for is in in on this page. If I see, let's say, the phone number shown up. If I see the phone number shown up. That means that okay it's successfully logged me right um let's look into the other scenario if i if i type something and if it, if that is not a valid one now nowhere the phone number shows up and it is saying we are sorry no matching profile has been found right so let's say if i see we are sorry no matching profile found that means that the test case failed right um i mean i shouldn't be saying the test case failed but we were not able to log in successfully all right so let us see how we are going to do that. So what I'm going to do here is I will look for something like this um, on the browser. So if I do o brow, right, o brow uh, on the browser, if I am looking for some text, right, if the text includes, if the text includes, includes what? This, right? If the text includes this message. What is the message? Uh, let's say, um, let me put something in here, put something in here, and go here. So if it says, we are sorry, no matching profile found. So if I go back and say that, if this is the text, right? So I have to say that this is the condition now. This is the condition. So for me to write the if statement, I would do if, if, this is the condition this condition is true right if that condition is true then i want to do something right i want to do something and the way if ends is uh with end with the keyword end so if this condition is true meaning that browser text include shows if on the browser if the text shows is this that means that i want to say the following i want to say puts and i want to say that um uh could not log in successfully or could not log in could not log in um uh check user name and password right or check your credentials right um 
test, let's say test fail, something like that. Right? Okay, else, else, um, what is the case? That means that uh, logged in successfully. So else puts um, logged in successfully, right? Uh, test passed. Okay. Okay. Uh, put that in here. Save it. Okay. So let's quickly check what we did here. Uh, we instantiated the browser object of the type uh, Firefox and uh, that we did by looking into this water API and in there there's a browser class and for the browser class we call the constructor of that and pass to it the type of the browser. So this obrow is a Firefox browser right now. So with the Firefox browser I want to go to this website trainingright.net and after that I want to go into and then set uh, to the on the text phone this one and then set the password as password and then click on the button and once i click on the button it'll go to the next page and then it'll look for this text we are sorry no matching uh, profile found if this comes that means that i cannot log in that could not log in right check username uh, password or check your check uh, credentials right so whatever you want check the uh, user uh, credentials uh, uh, test fail else uh, we want to pass the test all right okay makes sense now we might have some issues we might face where if it is too fast then uh, when we click on the button after we click on the button um, it immediately would look for this and maybe the browser has not loaded at that time so it's always better to have like uh, some uh, weight in here right what uh, and how do you manage weight um, basically uh, using your uh, using your uh, water we would say that um, a uh, browser uh, we want to manage we want to manage what the timeouts we want to manage the timeouts uh, and we want to put an implicit uh, uh, weight um, for we want to put an implicit uh, weight here uh, implicit uh, weight uh, uh, of let's say five seconds all right so with that we would put an implicit weight of five seconds okay now um i think i'm all set all good to go um let us bring up the command line and let us execute this this uh, uh script so i know i have saved this script save it into my ruby code which is in my which is in my C drive, C drive Ruby code, and then we have this uh, water web testing dot uh, Ruby. So I basically would be navigating there, cd dot dot, cd dot dot, and cd um, Ruby code, and let me run that script. So Ruby, uh, run for me water, right? Water um, web testing. Um, Water web testing. Um, one second, web testing. Dot rb. All right. Now, if everything is right, if everything is good, it should open up a Firefox browser, and then it should do the following. It should uh, basically go and uh, open up trainingright.net and put in that uh, text field seven three two nine nine eight, and then put in the password, the word password. Click on the button wait for implicit wait for five seconds for it to load and then check if the if the browser includes we are sorry no matching profile if we are sorry no matching profile then we it would say here uh, could not log in uh, check user credentials test fail right else if everything is good so it should say log in successfully test pass so i'm hoping to see this one because i have given the right uh, uh, username and the password all right, so let us uh, run it and then see what happens. So here we go. Um, we hope uh, to see the browser pop up uh, and uh, do the following. There it is, trainingright.net. It's going to go in there. Um, uh, now, you know what? It would be better if I maximize the browser. Okay, there it is. So everything is good. Log in successfully, test pass. Right. OK, so what I'm going to do is it was too fast for me to see. And also I wanted to uh, maximize the browser. So um, 
when do I want to maximize the browser? As soon as it opens uh, this, I would like to go and then maximize the browser. So I would say, oh, brow, right? Um, then I would say dot driver um, dot manage dot uh, window, right? Um, dot maximize, maximize. Okay, with that line, I'm hoping that the window gets maximized. Uh, so F3 to repeat my command and hit uh, enter and the browser would uh, open up and it would go ahead and then um, about this point it should maximize now and uh, uh, there it is enter that enter that okay there it is and then what we see here is logged in successful test pass all right okay so what we will do is uh, we will um, just to prove everything is right. I'm just gonna change this uh, password to uh, let's say bad password, right? Uh, save it and run this code again. And this time it should uh, uh, because it would be it's a bad password. This would pop up that uh, uh, no matching profile found, and it should say uh, could not log in. Uh, please check your credentials. So. All this time it was saying logged in logged in so let's do that um, so the browser should open up any minute and uh, uh, training right dot net and uh, maximize the browser and uh, go ahead and then put in the password and click on that we are sorry no matching and as you can see could not log in check your credentials test fail well, uh, so that is it as far as uh, this video is concerned. And uh, in my next video, what I will be doing is I'll be showing you as how we could go ahead and uh, um, kind of like uh, uh, use Excel to parameterize it, right? So we will be parameterizing it, connecting to Excel, and then fetching the data from Excel and passing it as variables here. And that way that Excel sheet is going to drive that. So it will be a data driven test that we'll be covering in our next video. Now, um, if this is something which you like, uh, then uh, we would suggest uh, go ahead, uh, look into this course, uh, Ruby Water, Cucumber, RSpec, Capybara software testing course. And uh, you would find a lot of things that we are covering as a part of this course, uh, particularly, um, you know, Cucumber and uh, um, capybara and all that are very interesting so look into that all right okay thank you again for being um, uh, here and watching this video and we hope to see you in another video sometime soon okay you have a good one